right, so in physics, we're in the last section, and so far what we've talked about are collisions, and I said that this section was on collisions and explosions. So it shouldn't be a surprise that the next example is really about explosions rather than a collision. So um, I am on page 511. So we're going to do that example. When we talk about an explosion, there's a lot of forces happening all at once. And if you think about it, shrapnel or, d or debris, um, when something explodes, pieces go off in all different directions. Even if it's just as simple as you drop a plate on the ground, um, pieces will go off in all different directions. Um, so we can tell a lot about an explosion. Again, if I'm some kind of um, bomb expert, one of the things they do is they look at the pattern of how the pieces exploded to figure out um, different things about that bomb or whatever it was that exploded about that explosion. Um, they look at what direction did things go off, how far did they travel, um, where is the most damage, where's the least damage, those types of things in order to figure out everything they can about um, what happened. So, um, on page 511, what they tell us is, I gotta pick it up, I'm getting old, is there's a 25 gram spherical firecracker. And when it explodes, it explodes into three parts. You were able to get a photograph taken under a strobe light of two dimensions of the explosion. However, one of the fragments was at a range of the photograph. So there's three pieces, but you only got to see two. Um, after the explosion, you measured the mass of the two fragments and calculated the velocity of the fragments from the photograph. Wow, you were bored. Okay. Um, by superimposing a coordinate system on the photograph, see, you were really bored. Um, you measured the angles at which the fragments moved. So, um, the mass of fragment one is six grams and it moved off at an angle of 35 degrees with the positive x axis at a velocity of um, 42 meters per second. Okay, so, um, and then, Lost my place, sorry. And then there's an 11 kilo, uh, kilogram, 11 gram piece um, that moved off at an angle of 21 degrees clockwise with the negative x axis. Okay, that 35 degree one. Let me look. Moved off at an angle of 35 degrees with the positive x-axis. Interesting. Okay. Um, I don't, I don't like how they drew it. Anyway, um, and it says, what was the velocity of the third fragment? What was the velocity of the third fragment? Well, I can already figure out the mass of the third fragment because it started off saying that the firecracker was 25 grams. Well, if the firecracker was 25 grams, I've got 11 and six. So I have 17 grams here, which means the mass of the third gram has to be eight because that only makes sense, right? Okay, um, so it, the first thing it says to do is to do a sketch. I'm just, I'm trying to figure out their diagram because I'm not a real fan of it. Um, I think their fragments are wrong. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, I think their fragments are wrong. Yeah, they've labeled it wrong because 35 degrees is fragment one. 
you know, mass one, mass two, 35 degrees counterclockwise. Yeah, they've labeled their picture wrong. Good for them. All right, so I'm going to actually draw two pictures. I'm going to draw a picture for um, mass one, and I'm going to draw a picture for mass two. And we're going to be dealing with the component method here. Now remember, we're trying to figure out the velocity of the third component, the third piece of that firecracker. Where did it go? What direction did it go off in? Um, so first off, they did not word this how I like it, but that's okay. I can do it. Um, they say that the first one is going, um, mass one is at 35 degrees to the positive x axis. Now, they really should have said counterclockwise to the positive x axis, but they didn't, and they should have. Um, so here would be 35 degrees from the positive x axis. I will be more specific when I give you questions. Um, and its velocity is 42 meters per second. Think about how fast, like 42 meters per second is really, really fast. You know how they say you should never hold a firecracker in your closed hand because like you can blow off fingers? That's why. All right. Um, and mass two is 21 degrees clockwise from the negative x-axis. So here's the negative x-axis. Clockwise would be this way. So mass two is in this quadrant and it's at 21 degrees. Now, um, we are going to look at um, the x components and the y components. And we're going to do what we did. Do you remember when we did the questions where I'm standing here and one kid is pulling on me in one direction with a certain force and another kid is pulling on me in another direction with another force? Um, with what force and what direction would the third kid have to pull me in order to keep me stationary? All right. So this is the same idea because before the firecracker exploded, it wasn't moving. It was zero. So if momentum before and momentum after have to be equal, well, before the momentum was nothing because the firecracker was just sitting there until someone lit it. Um, and so afterwards, the momentum of those three pieces has to add up to give me zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at x components and y components here. Um, just let me grab my calculator. So if we look here at the x component and the y component, and I'm going to set up a little table over here for x's and y's. Now again, we can um, leave things in terms of grams if we want to, I think. Um, I'm just double checking. Nope, they change it to kilograms. Um, I don't know why, but they change it to kilograms, so we will too. So divide by a thousand point zero zero six. And um, in terms of the 11, uh, one, two, three would be 0 0.011 kilograms. Okay, so we'll change it into kilograms. So this would be 0 0.008 kilograms. All right, so um, if we're going to figure out momentum, because that's what we're talking about, because remember when we talk about it, explosions or collisions, we want to talk about the momentum just before and the momentum just after. So what we're going to do is we're going to figure out the momentum of the um, x component here. So the x component is cos because it's the adjacent side. So it would be 42 times cos of 35. That would be my velocity. And my mass for mass 1 is 0 0.006. And that is going to give me the momentum of piece 1, the x component. And so if I do that, if I do 0 0.006 times 
42 times cos of 35, I get 0.2064. And oh good, I agree with them. So for fragment one, so for fragment number one, the x component is 0.2064, and it keeps on going to, we'll just leave it there, that's probably far enough. Um, the y component for 1 is going to be 42 times sine of 35, because it's the opposite side, times 0 0.006, because it's mass times velocity gives you momentum. So 0 0.006 times 42 times this time sine of 35 gives me 0 0.11, no, sorry, 0 0.14454. Um, and do I agree with them? Yes, I do. 0 0.11, no, 0.14454. That's the Y component. I'm going to do the same thing for mass 2, all right? I'm going to do exactly the same thing for mass 2. I'm going to figure out the x, and I'm going to figure out the y. Um, the, the velocity for 2, I apparently did not write down. Let me look back. The velocity for 2... It does not say. Why doesn't it say? Okay, so this question is really messed up because in the question, again, remember I said they didn't really define what direction here? They also didn't include velocity 2, but they did include it down in the information when they started doing their calculations. Again, I'll be a lot better at this. Um, and so it was 33 meters per second. And as far as I can see, that's nowhere in the words in the question. Um, but it is further down, so we can do the question. So this is 33. All right, so again, for 2, we're going to figure out the momentum for 2. We're going to figure out the x component, and we're going to figure out the y component. Now, the x component is going to have to be negative because of where it is is okay so um, if i'm doing this if i'm going to do the x component first again that is cos so i'm going to do negative 33 times cos of 21 and then the mass is 0 0.011 again i'm putting a negative on here because i know this needs to be negative now if you want to leave this positive and just stick the negative on at the end that's fine um, we can do that but just make sure that you do make it negative because of where it is on our cartesian plane so if i do point zero wow if i do point zero one one times 33 times cos of 21 I get 0 0.338889, 0 0.338889, but again, it has to be negative because of where it is, so negative 0 0.338889. Um, now, the y, same thing, for the, so this was for the x. For the y, for momentum 2, it's going to be 33 times co, no, times sine, sorry, because now we're doing the opposite side, sine of 21 times 0 0.011, mass times velocity. And it's going to be positive because, again, y is positive in this quadrant. So 0 0.011 times 33 times sine of 21 gives me 0 0.130087 and it keeps on going okay it's actually eight sorry when i round it off so if i add these up if i add this up 0 0.2064 minus 
3888839, that gives me negative 0.132489. Okay, so when I add them together, it gives me that. But remember, I need the third piece, I because this is piece two, I need the third piece whatever that is, I need it so that the x components equal zero. So that means the third piece has to be positive 0.132489. And the same thing over here. If I add these two, 0.14454 plus 0.13, helps if I can actually type, 30088. Um, that is 0.274628. And so the third piece has to be negative 0.274628 in order for it to equal zero. So now I've got that. All right. So if I want to figure out the momentum overall, because what I figured out is I have figured out the x component of momentum of the third piece and the y component of the momentum of the third piece. And so if I am placing that somewhere, again, I'm going to erase this so that I can put it in the right spot. Now, if I'm looking at mass three, uh, my x is positive, but my y is negative. So my x is positive, but my y is negative. That means the third piece went this way. Okay, so that is the direction. So I can figure out the momentum because I can do Pythagorean theorem. The momentum will equal 0.132489 squared plus um, 0.274628 squared, and it doesn't really matter whether you put the negative there or not, because you're going to square it anyway. And then we'll take the square root to get that the overall momentum is 0 0.30 kilograms times meters per second. That is the momentum. Um, and direction would be tan theta of y over x. So y over x would be 0.274628 over 0.132489. And again, I wouldn't worry about the negative at all. That actually will probably just mess you up if you do that. Um, so I would just use the positive for both because the only reason we looked at the signs was to figure out where it would be. Um, and they figured out that that would be 64 degrees. So it would be here, it would be 64 degrees. Now, we still haven't actually figured out what they want because we have the momentum, but they want to know the velocity. So we know that momentum is mass times velocity. And we figured out the momentum. Um, and by the way, before it was rounded off, it was 0.30491, okay? When they rounded it off for significant figures, they got that. Um, and that's equal to mass. And we figured out the mass was 0 0.008 times velocity. So just divide both sides by 0 0.008, and they say it should be, that's really bad, it should be 38 meters per second. So my velocity of that third piece, it's going 38 meters per second, and it's going 64 degrees clockwise from the positive x axis. All right, so that's how you do an explosion. Again, you take your pieces, uh, you find your components, you add up your components, then you can use Pythagorean theorem and tan. Just watch what they're asking for, all right? Um, so that is if it is a, an explosion.
Um, we still have, oh, we still have two more examples to do. I'm going to do pretty much one a day. So again, we may, may need to extend when the um, physics assignment is due. Don't, don't count on that though. Who knows how fast we'll go. Um, don't count on that, but we may have to. I'm not worried about it if we have to. Um, but you can be doing everything up to the point at which we've gotten to, which is like probably 98% of the questions. I think there may be only one or two at the most that we haven't covered at this point. All right, so that is how you deal with explosions. Um, we're going to deal with elastic versus inelastic collisions, which we've already covered before back in grade 11 physics. Um, and then we're going to do questions where we take everything, and I do mean everything, everything that we've learned and we put them together into um, questions. And we go all the way back into grade 11 physics where we're talking about distance and velocity and time and all kinds of different things. So just be ready for that, okay? So we will talk to you again soon.